Hi there. Hi. Um, I'm trying a different headset. Is this okay? Does it sound okay? Yeah, sounds good to me. All right, because I've been having trouble on WebEx with my other audio, so I'm trying these uh, this other headset, the other Bluetooth okay. headset. So, how's my audio so far? That sounds fine. Okay. So I already put something in the notes, yeah, so we can good. track who's who's being assigned what action items. Yeah. Do we have anything to set up? I've noticed you already shared the chair slide. Yeah, I think we're good. Um, so I, I don't think we we have to assign a, a note taker. I can just do it and or. Uh, okay. Yeah, that probably, seems fine. Yeah. Do you have much of a weekend? Uh, uh, so we are currently remodeling our kitchen, so that would, that's a bit time consuming. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So not very much. Well, can you go out to eat where you are or do, do, what do you do? Uh, so the uh, kitchen is, is still functional, but uh, so tomorrow I start ripping everything apart and then I hope it will be done just uh, the day after tomorrow. Oh, it's then you from... can't be doing very much to a kitchen if it's only taking two days. Yeah, no. So we're keeping all, you know, all the machines and um, it's basically just the, how do you say that, um, the working surface and um, yeah, some, some, some ti tiny <laughs> cosmetic repairs. So we don't go for the, for the whole rebuild or anything. Ah, 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 okay. Ah, there's a mark. Hi, Mark. I wonder if we'll get any of the usual crowd besides the people who actually are involved in Flick. We'll see. Yeah, let's see. It's a bit of an experiment. You know, I really just like the fact that we don't have individual logins, so we can't tell that you and I are, are you can't rename ourselves in the participant list. Yeah, so what's really worrying that, so I started the meeting, but it's listing you as the host. <laughs> so well, you can, you can, there's a menu item that says reclaim host role. Uh -huh, right, yeah. Let me just... Yeah, change role to host. Yep, um, I think I have to, uh, stop sharing for that just a moment. <laughs> okay. Um, the participant menu item. Reclaim host role. Yeah. Okay. Now you're the host. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> and now you can represent. Very good. So did we lose Mark or what's going on? You, by the way, uh, you're in PDF expert and you may want to hit the uh, expand the window option. Ah, okay, yeah. Ah, oh, there's Cedric, but well, we lost Mark. Does it work to expand the? So I'm wondering what is, okay. That made it somewhat bigger. Yeah. Ah, there we go. You still want it a little bigger because. Yeah, that, that used name, to work better before. Let me, let me try again, there's something. I think you might want to just hit the, the, the green, you know, expand the window button at the top. Yeah, but then it's full screen, but that's not what I normally want. Okay. That looks right. Yeah, yeah. it looks sure. Oh, but not quite right because the bottom of the slide's cut off. Yeah, no, wait a second, please.
good enough? Yeah. Okay. So it seems like um, when I go to do my slides from, from Google, it doesn't seem to do the right thing. Do I have to export them or something? Um, so I did a PDF export of your slides and that's what I have here. Ah, okay. Fine, because when I go in the presentation mode out of Google Slides, it just goes full screen. Yeah. Yeah. And then I can't share that. Right. Or maybe I could, I don't know. All right, so you, you exported the... Yeah, so if you want, I oh, mean, okay. I can see them from here or you can also just maybe use... No, the... you, you, can, you can drive, that's fine. Okay. Hi, Mark. Hi, Cedric. Hi, Yun Chao. Hi, Chang. Hey, how you doing? Hi, Alex. Hello. Oh, yes, there's my mute. Okay. <laughs> We're still not quite at the top of the hour, so we'll wait for a few more people. And we need Christian. And yeah, Chris. I think Christian wants to join. And Chris. Would. Yeah. I can. I can. Hello, gentlemen and ladies, if there are any. Yeah, let's wait um, two more minutes. We're waiting for um, two of the Flick co-authors. Oh, hi, Alicia. Hi, David. I, I we have a few conferences going on in my home, so I have to put on my headset first. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi. Oh, so Dirk, do you want me to walk briefly through the, the update slides that I did at the previous IETF that other people may not recall or just let people look at them? We can we can uh, go through them. Yeah, you, you mean the the group items status or the the this update status that I did at IHF 106. Ah, okay. Um, do you, so do you have them or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I may even have them in PowerPoint so that I could share that directly. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got that. So I'll cool. walk through that really fast since they've been presented before, but it'll help people catch up on exactly um, what's in O2. Yeah. So we can do that as the sort of like first thing. Okay. Uh, in the in that part of the meeting. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's um, start with the um, general part. Um, welcome yeah, everybody. Let's get, 
great to see you uh, uh, online. It would be nicer to see you face to face, but um, I think that that's the best way we can do. Um, yeah, I'm I'm Dirk Kutcher. Uh, my co-chair Dave Oran is also in the call, and um, so this is a bit of an of a new experiment for an uh, IC Energy uh, meeting. So in the past we have been doing the like the, these typical research group meetings with like all kinds of general presentations and um, you know work items updates and so on. And uh, so this time we want to do try something new and um, really focus um, on one of our our ongo ongoing uh, um, work items and this, that is Flick. So it's a bit a different style. Um, let's see how it goes. So. Um, if you haven't uh, seen the link to the shared note taking tool, um, that's the second thing here um, in the list. We also uploaded um, the slides to the data, data tracker. Um, regarding these instructions here, um, so I don't think we're going to be a very big group today. So um, I think we can, we don't need to obey this um, WebEx uh, plus Q minus Q protocol. So I think. Just use your microphone, and um, we can have an, uh, a more lively discussion. I think. But st stay uh, muted unless you have something to say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, just quickly, um, uh, we are the at the um, IRTF, so we're following the IRTF um, IPR rules. Um, let us know soon if you um, are aware of any contribution or an, any. Um, also discuss discussion item where you know that there is uh, IPR on. And um, yeah, also check the uh, privacy and uh, code of conduct uh, that the uh, IRTF adheres to. So um, just quickly, um, the IRTF is um, the, the research um, sister organization of the IRTF, so we're generally not making standards. Um, so we're doing uh, research and uh, in IC Energy, um, yeah, we try to encourage, foster new experiments with, with ICN. And um, so the Flick topic today is also, um, say, one activity um, in this perspective. Quickly, if you are new to this, um, I, I guess not, but um, this is our usual IC Energy um, coordinates um so we we um have the have a wiki here where you also see the list of past meetings and also the coordinates for this meetings um note taking um for this meeting um i will just do that so we don't have to um uh, find somebody else um today and quickly the agenda that's um yeah really short because we really want to allocate most of the time um, to Flick. Um, so discussing current status, next steps, and also assigning um, to do items. If there's time in, in the end and people want to discuss um, something else, uh, that um, would be fine. Um, so let us know, maybe um, is, is there anything that uh, you urgently want to discuss today? You're just quickly asking around. So in general, um, we try to make it so that um, so we keep the um, admin updates and all these things uh, to the mailing list, and, and really try to use the meeting time um, for for discussion. But of course, if you anything that is uh, important and you would like to talk about it, uh, let us know. Um, just a very quick update uh, on what happened in IC Energy. Just very short. So um, we published, finally published the taxonomy document, uh, SRC 8793, uh, deployment guidelines uh, 8763. Uh, the disaster draft is in the RC editor queue, so about to be published. Um, and the low pan draft is almost through the ISG, I and um, that took a bit of time. Um, the NIS documents are also in ISG review as well as um, Dave's uh, QoS architecture um, draft. As you had, uh, may have seen, uh, we had a, a lively discussion on the IPOC draft that uh, we last called earlier. Um, thanks, everybody, who contributed to that discussion. Um, so we decided that, um, well, there has been substantial um, uh, feedback um, that seems to suggest, 
and that uh, we need to take another round on this. So we uh, send this back to the group now for um, a more substantial update. And finally, uh, the uh, time theory specification has been updated. Um, please chime in uh, in the uh, email thread on, on the mailing list. Um, so we send out an, a call for uh, um, feedback to um, adopting this. Um, and um, so it's also affecting a bit our, our core specifications. And um, yeah, so Flick today. Um, so um, if you're new to Flick, I, I, I don't hope so, but um, so uh, Flick is like one of the key technologies um, for ICN that are really uh, important for um, publishing uh, larger sets of, of static data. So a, um, in, in Flick, um, um, we're talking about uh, manifests that are describing these uh, uh, file-like uh, collections. And um, so it's uh, a, yeah, a key mechanism that we need for many uh, applications that deal with this uh, larger static files. And um, also brings about, um, say, efficiency uh, benefits that because you can um, basically um, treat the manifest as a, as a you know, signed document that um, uh, points to um, uh, hashed uh, chunks of, of one file. Um, and so it's uh, yeah widely used or should be widely used in, in uh, many static um, content distribution scenarios. And um, so let, maybe let me switch to um, the other slide set that uh, Dave prepared and um, just a moment here. So uh, I'll let you, I'll just call the next slide when we need it. This is going to be yeah, really please. quick. Yeah. So, uh, next slide. Current status. <laughs> wait, so wait. We're... Hello, hello. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> well, here we are. We're, so the 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 work on Flick has gone in little little bursts here and there, and then sort of goes on the back burner for a while. Uh, so we did a burst on it prior to IETF 106, um, and and then put it back on the back burner. So it sort of like keeps crawling slowly toward being finished, but but never quite getting there. So um, the current version has expired as a data tracker. Uh, we're not worried about that. We'll re uh, we'll refresh it from the output from this meeting and any action items that we do. Uh, but I would like to go through in a minute the status from IETF 106, so everybody's up to date on exactly where the document is at the moment. Next slide. So the next slide uh, just has all the resources you may need if you want to um, either get up to speed on Flick or use it. Um, the spec is in GitHub, so we can use GitHub issues and uh, other techniques for tracking uh, changes and tracking um, issues. Uh, we have a Python implementation. Uh, there's a proposal for how to do group keying with Flick, which is probably pretty important and people should look at. Um, and some initial thoughts that Mark wrote up on how to do key wrapping so, um, so you don't have to re-key everything. Um, you can do key evolution on, on when keying the manifest. And we have some worked out examples. Next slide. Yep. Uh, we'll, we'll, th this will be in the meeting material, so you'll be able to refer back to, um, to those resources really easily just through the data tracker. So we're going to quickly go over um, what's the current status of the spec uh, via these update slides, decide what we really need to do right now uh, to get a re refresh of the draft, a list of action items that we believe are necessary to happen before we go to last call, and have a victim assigned for each of the action items. Um, so I think a reasonable goal, given that we're in August uh, at this point, um, is if we can put a little bit of a push on and people do some work, uh, we can get this document to uh, RG last call uh, before the next um, IETF cycle. So we're done there. Uh, if okay. you'll give me the baton here, uh, Dirk, I'll yep. share this. Um, why can't I share? So, um, 
you know, I think you have to make me presenter or something. Right. So we are we are both here in the list as IC Energy, and um, I don't have a separate. Oh no! Item for you. So um... you can can you bring up the slides from the data tracker? Um, yeah. Give me give me a second. Yeah. I'll start talking without the slides, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and we'll catch up. So I don't want to waste. I don't really don't want to waste time on um, history when we could be moving things forward. So. The history is that this has been around for a long time. Um, manifests are in NDN considered a useful thing, but not fundamental. Um, so a lot of applications are written in a way that uh, individual content objects are completely independent of one another and each individually signed. Um, and manifests are, are um, a nice add-on that applications can use at their, at their convenience. However, in CCNX, uh, they're pretty much critical because the architecture in CCNX is heavily uh, biased toward most objects being named simply with hash names and not full names, with the idea that things that have full names are actually the manifest for collections of objects. So we have these things called nameless objects in CCNX that just have a hash. Um, and it's used for the segmentation of large objects, not, not just having um, a sequence number as one of the, uh, as the trailing um, element of the name, and also allows you to use these manifests as collections uh, like directories uh, for structuring lower parts of a namespace. Um, so it's been implemented and in use all along on a lot of applications. Next slide. Ah, so some things haven't changed from the last uh, time we went on. Uh, so uh, all the basics are still there. Flick still has the metadata and the manifest and encryption keys. This is a very important thing to point out. In your signatures on manifests are expected to be in the same key domain and trust schema as uh, the date itself for signing manifests. But our expectation is that you may want the encryption keys on manifest to be different from the encryption keys used for data uh, for a whole variety of reasons. But one is that you may want forwarders to be able to read manifest, even if they can't read data, in order to do things like prefetching um, and uh, instrumentation uh, of data flowing through them. Next slide. Yeah, so what's changed is the first, so one major change is that um, namespaces are explicitly supported in, in Flick. Uh, so you can have a hash-based namespace, uh, a single rooted namespace, or a segmented namespace, and those can be used for uh, a variety of things. So for example, uh, for just getting at pieces of a single object, you can use the nameless version with just the hash names. Single prefix allows you to have a manifest that names a, a single object that then points to the, the, the other ones. And the segmented pre prefix allows you to have every name be unique, which is what you might want to use for a collection like a directory or some um, element of, of uh, enumerating the members of a lower part of a namespace. So each hash group, which is the sort of fundamental data structure, can have its own namespace. Next slide. So we redid, uh, for, for the current version of spec, we redid encryption pretty much from the ground up uh, to make it, as I said, quite a bit more flexible. Um, there's no information leaks in the manifest. So anything that might uh, have problems with privacy, we believe, are covered by the encryption of the manifest. And in place, it supports in place encrypt, decrypt, so you don't have to do data copies. Um, one encryption key per manifest, and but what we have in the spec is a pre-shared encryption key uh, method, uh, which you'd use um, as sort of a basic thing, but doesn't give you very much flexibility, and two group keying mechanisms. The idea of using group key mechanisms is that uh, our expectation is that manifests would be consumed by multiple 
uh, clients and not by a single client. So you would like um, a group key uh, to be what's used for the manifest. Next slide. Um, we sort of refactored all the metadata, uh, allowing both direct and subtree sizes, um, and uh, tried to keep the data structures the same for node level and hash group level. So, you're, so it keeps the parser simple um, and uh, makes both construction and traversal easier. Now we have both plain pointers, which just is effectively what you use to construct a name and an interest, and annotated pointers. So plain pointers are just as they were before, an array of hash values. Annotated pointers, however, which are new, allow you to add metadata and various extensions to the pointers. So one we put in, uh, in directly in the spec is object size, so that when you fetch a manifest, you don't actually have to go and try to fetch individual items pointed to by the manifest in order to figure out how big they are. You can get the size directly out of the manifest. And then there's some other ones that we're proposing, don't define in here, but proposing would be potentially useful for various applications, like hints for traversal order of the manifest, and things like video decoding hints, which, um, which sub-objects, for example, if they're uh, frames of, uh, of MPEG-style video, might be more important than others. Next slide. So uh, locators can be an array. Um, and the Python implementation, I don't recall, Mark, whether we've updated it or not since this. Do you remember? Mark can weigh in in a minute. Um, next slide. Yeah, I think I, we're I, about I, done. I had to find my mute. Uh, no, the, 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 the Python implementation is lagging a little bit what's in um, the O2 as it was published, uh, but it has maybe like 80 or 90 percent of the features of O2. Okay, great. Next slide. All right, so we have some code to do. Um, update the implementation for uh, CCNX uh, using CICN as the base. Um, and then we need a bunch of the standard stuff that, that needs in a document to go forward. So we need IANA considerations because we are registering some things. And uh, while there's a lot of security sprinkled through the document in terms of signatures and, um, uh, and encryption processes. Um, we do need a security consideration section, which talks about the, 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 where, the where's and the why's of the design. Um, and a couple of other minor updates. Uh, I think that's it. Yes, is there another slide? Nope. No. Okay. So that's, that's the current status. That's where we are right now. Okay. So, um, how to move on? Do we, um, do you have, do, does anybody have any other ideas or leftover items that we still, that we, we forgot to talk, uh, talk about? here uh, Dirk can you hear me yep yes we can uh, I was uh, thinking about uh, let's quickly do a round of uh, where do we see the current write-up uh, the scope of it and uh, whether we already agree the thing still to be done assumes that uh, it's just about finishing here the pieces that are missing but maybe we should quickly just make sure that we are all on the same page uh, what I observe is that it has become quite complex to some extent, that uh, with these uh, segmented prefixes and the um, idea of uh, having even directory style, it almost looks like a kind of a file system snapshot. It is not only a single file-like collection, it is now a file system-like collection thing, and there is a lot of security that has come in whether for me it's not so clear how much has to be included or whether it is sufficient to just have the hooks. So uh, it would be maybe good to characterize where should we stop 
should we really have all the things in that or should we think about cutting a core which has then the extensions that can be added on later? Uh, I'm putting that just as a question and uh, maybe uh, um, especially the, the last two having worked on that burst, uh, Dave and Mark uh, could maybe comment, but also the others, what is the feeling about that? It, 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 I, I, I'm a little bit afraid that it can become too big to handle uh, if we want to complete everything. Yeah, thanks, Christian. Sure. Uh, I, I can tackle a few of those uh, questions. Um, so, the, you know, the, the namespaces have two aspects to them. One is, you know, so, so, so the, 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 the point of a namespace is to say, what convention is used to generate the name that goes in an interest that's created from the manifest? And, uh, and the ones that I put in here were hash naming, uh, single prefix, and segmented prefix. Um, those are independent of whether the thing you're talking about is a single file or multiple files or what have you. There, you know, it doesn't imply anything about what the actual thing is you're fetching. They just govern the rules about how you make the name of the thing that you're fetching. Um, and uh, then, then the other aspect is each hash group can have its own namespace. So if you did want to talk about two different things, for instance, um, uh, hash groups that point to other manifests might use one namespace, and hash groups that point to data might use a different namespace. Um, and again, that, that doesn't mean that the data is referring to multiple objects or a single file. You know, it's just saying, you know, I, I can use different namespaces, you know, for, for example, for the manifest data versus the, you know, data data. Um, did, did, that, did that help clarify that point for you, Christian? Yes, absolutely. But the question is exactly, should we really cover both because you could think also about we could have a f lick so the file lick and the d lick a directory lick if we only are at with use working with hashes uh, we avoid some of the problems that come with going the d lick we have for example potentially loops in the manifest right you are not building a tree anymore there could be loops and uh, that is one other point uh, where then we have to discuss about the security. Your algorithm about parsing a manifest depends on the data provided by potentially malicious slick writer. And I didn't see a section on that uh, from experience on implementing the first flick for myself. I, this is one of the uh, headaches I had. So that is what I put on the table. Should we really go for the full thing or make sure okay. that we are already comfortable with, for example, only hash based one and then see whether we can, how far we can go, but maybe in a different document. Okay, uh, so, so, so uh, maybe also to clarify, the, the different namespaces, they're all hash based names. So everything is still a hash pointer. It's a question about how do I construct the prefix for that hash? Um, so, you know, and whether you're going to use like, you know, uh, uh, you know, routing hints or, you know, locators or all that sort of stuff, the, you know, so the namespaces govern, how do I make the name that goes in an interest to retrieve a hash, but you're always retrieving a hash. I see. So you think uh, there is no loop. For, for example, just to take an example, we can't have loops uh, in what is constructed. It's really the prefixes are just decorations. Yeah, that, 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 that's right. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure there can't be loops because of the, the, the hash base tree. Sorry, I don't, that does, that's not, well, I haven't thought about it much, but 
That's not obvious to me. If you're going to take a pre, an arbitrary prefix and stick a hash on, you know, a hash content hash restriction with it uh, to construct an interest, I don't see why you can't have loops. Um. Well, let's be careful. There's two types of loops we might be talking about. One is a retrieval loop, and another is a traversal of the manifest loop. So if somebody's constructed badly constructed what purports to be a manifest tree, uh, but the prefix that you use to um, fetch the next manifest in the manifest tree con could conceivably create a loop. Not a loop of fetching, but a loop of traversal. On the other hand, those kinds of loops, those are centralized um, uh, algorithmic loops of a, of a of a iterative um, of iterative code, so they're trivial to find and declare as being wrong. Right? It's not like a distributed loop that that screws you completely. Yeah, I, I, I'm 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 still not well. You know. Yeah, I'm still not sure that you could construct a hash tree. You know, so the flick manifest is still a hash tree. You know, if you ignore all the decorations for for how you create the name for it, it's still a hash tree. And I don't know how you would have a parent node, sorry, a child node point to its parent because the parent can't be created until after the child is created. Right. So. Um, Okay, that but, but 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 that that's intuition. I haven't you know proved anything or whatever. Well, but uh, so uh, sorry, I just uh, because I thought the um, so the parent hash includes all the child all the pointer hashes that that are in the manifest. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I get it. Yeah, that's right. Because manifest trees are built are they're traversed top down. They're built bottom up. But I do, I, um, I, I, sorry, go ahead, Mark. Oh, okay, well, I, 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 was going to, I was going to switch to addressing Christian's second point about encryption, but, but let, let, let's, work, let's work out this hash thing in namespaces first if there's more on that. So I wanna, yeah, we can do that, but I wanna come back to sort of like the, uh, the, the essence of Christian's question, which is if we're making things more complicated and putting features into the spec, on the um, faith that somebody might want to use them, and nobody, in fact, wants to use them, um, Occam's razor might lead one to the conclusion that we should not put them in yet. And right. um, and I, I think that's an I think that's an open question. It's an open trade-off. I'm obviously yeah. on the side of some of these things going in because. Um, uh, you know, I've always been of the opinion that manifests are really pretty deep and fundamental in an ICN architecture. And hence, they're not just for uh, dealing with single large segmented objects. Right. They're, so, they're used, so they're as, used as, as a way of explicitly organizing your, na your namespace as an adjunct to the hierarchical structure that the application creates. Yeah. So as far as, far as the namespaces, um, CCN would prefer to use the hash-based naming, you know, in, in a lot of situations. And NDN would prefer to use the segmented prefix naming, so every data object has a unique name. That, that, I mean, that's my understanding of the, the, the NDN preferences is, you know, everything should have a un, unique name and, um, you know, we, we want we want these manifests to accommodate what the typical usage of the protocol, um, and you know I, I wrote up ways that I believe NDN could work with all three different types of namespaces, but we, we need to support you know what the preferred way of naming data objects is, you know in, in that in that protocol. So I I, I think I think that. 
just to support the diversity of ways that people use these things, you know, having, you know, at least the two namespaces of hash space naming and segmented prefix naming, you know, need to be in there. Um, you know, maybe you could throw out the single prefix name if, if you wanted to do that. So um, I sent a bunch of comments to the list, which were linked in, um, but let me, uh, my high level impression from reading this O2 draft was, um, I think it, it seemed like it suffered a little bit from uh, trying to abstract from the differences between NDN and CCN. Uh, and there were places where term I like I by the end of reading it, I couldn't quite figure out what a what a namespace was. Okay. I mean, I had the general idea that Mark just described a minute ago, but um, I didn't know, for example, uh, well, there, there was a bunch of stuff that I was still unclear about and it may be because. You know, I didn't realize there was a Python implementation. I didn't look at that, but I. I I got the, I think I said this in my comments that I felt like maybe there was stuff that I should have known and didn't um, before looking at it. But, you know, when it, the, at the beginning, when it said inode, the inode model, I thought, okay, great. That's a simple, very uh, useful building block capability. And, but then as I read the document, there were all these options and, and possibilities for ways to use the thing. And that just it made it harder for me to understand what actually was was there and wasn't there. And right. Well, remember that I, I nodes for blocks or files are different from I nodes for directories. So um, we're we're sort of smushing. And I nodes are not I nodes in terms of their their actual bits on the disk are the same, but I nodes is interpreted by anything that uses them are different for pieces of a file from a directory. Yeah, I, I understand that. And I mm -hmm. my think, well, uh, you know, it just seems to me like it's kind of not a good, not necessarily a good idea to smoosh those things together, or at least if I'm building an application, uh, do I put my directory hierarchy in my manifest or do I put it in the namespace? And um, how do I decide that? I mean, I don't know. I guess right. I'm I'm arguing maybe w along with Christian for a simple thing to get started and get more experience with building applications. So so Ken, you know, thanks a lot for your comments. So those that was really great to get those from you. Um, and and yeah, it it, it 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 might be better to have the inode analogy in the beginning and. You know, like all good analogies, you know, keep it short and simple and not try to carry it through the whole document. Um, the, um, uh, yeah, I mean, one of the big differences is, um, uh, you know, the, the, the flick entries, you know, it, it's actually trying to have, you know, one format that serves both for, you know, um, more manifest entries, you know, a directory entry, and, and and also the same thing for you know data entries. So, you know, the the, the analogy to inodes is, you know, perhaps limited. Um, uh, the um, uh, okay. Can I ask a probably dumb question? And this might be in there. Uh, might be in there somewhere. But if if there's a if a hash pointer, okay, a, a hash value that's inside a manifest, can I tell by looking at that whether that points to another manifest or to uh, application data? Yes. How? Um, the, the all pointers are inside hash groups, and hash groups are 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 explicitly marked as being uh, uh, manifest pointers versus uh, uh, root object. Data pointers, correct? It, yeah, the, 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 so yeah, so point pointers can have labels, and you can have different hash groups. You know, whether it's a data group or a directory group. Um, 
So two things occur to me in this conversation, because um, we're sort of talking about two things at the same time. Uh, one is, um, can we be confident that if we strip down to just the basics that we had before we added all the goop, that knowing what the goop we want, we've added is and how we did it, can we split the document in two pieces such that um, we have nice, the, 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 all the group for namespaces and annotations and all that other stuff, um, in fact, um, can be done um, as, as add-ons, as opposed to having to have two completely, in, or three completely independent manifest formats, right? Because um, if, if we can, if we can make the complexity hierarchical, um, at least conceptually in the way we write things down, that, that, would, that would make me a lot more comfortable with let's move forward with just the simple stuff first. Um, the second thing is, uh, and I'm realizing from the conversation is, um, calling the way you um, put something in the manifest to tell somebody how to construct names and interests and namespace, that's probably a very bad choice of terminology because anybody who's not, who's coming at this naively is going to go, what, what the, what the hell, what, this is, I know what a namespace is and it isn't this. So it occurs to me that maybe we need to change the terminology there and call it something like name, um, you know, name constructors. Sure. As, yeah. as opposed to namespaces. Yep. We have three kinds of name constructors. Yeah, and, and, and to more fully answer the question about um, can you tell whether it's a manifest or, or a data? Um, not necessarily. So, you know, in the simplest manifest, you have a single hash group and there are hash pointers and you don't know what you what you're going to get until you get it. Um, well, sorry, but then is there some kind of magic number? I I guess you got to. I mean, are the types guaranteed to be distinct from any application data? I mean, I don't know how you tell once you get it. Yeah, yeah. When you, when you actually retrieve the thing, you'll be able to tell this is application data or this is a manifest. Um, yeah, the only the issue is whether you have to fetch it first before you know what you've got. Right. So, so you know, w a, a different way of constructing this is to use one hash group for data and one hash group for manifest, or, or you could interleave them. You could have multiples of each type, um, or to use annotated data pointers where it's not just an array of hashes, but you have uh, an indication about whether this hash is a data pointer or a manifest pointer. So the, there's lots, the, 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 there's a, not lots, but there's a few different ways that an application can organize its manifest so it could tell, um, you know, if it understood, you know, the manifest nature. Um, it, that, and and, and uh, an application can organize its manifest one way but a consumer doesn't need to actually understand that it was constructed that way. It's just going to keep, you know, walking the tree and retrieving data pointers. So even if it doesn't understand, it could still fetch the whole thing. Um, but an application that understood the semantics of it, you know, might have optimized behavior on the manifest. Um, and, you know, since each hash group can have its own encryption, you know, that would allow you to, um, uh, you know, organize your data with different, you know, keys for different things. Um, so, you know, we, we, we had talked about, you know, like only doing like the super basic encryption in this document. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, if, if, if there, you know, if there was the energy and ability to then publish like some follow on documents with, um, 
you know, uh, uh, like group key security and, and broadcast encryption or whatever, that would be great. Um, you know, I, I think that it is important to have worked out at least, you know, three or four different ways of doing encryption so we're confident that the data structures in the core document correctly support those applications or those those types of encryption. Um, so, you know, whether it's all in one document or split up, you know, that's fine, but I think we need to have worked out, you know, multiple ways of doing it to make sure that what we have as the base, you know, is sufficient to encode those things. quickly uh, come, come back also joining that discussion now I also go a little bit in, into the topic that we're discussing right now uh, would it be possible to also use the forward criteria to separate or to handle what should be in a document or not uh, all the directory related discussions uh, might not be really uh, digested by any forwarder while the pure hash-based tree, uh, that might be still in the reach of a forwarder. So I'm thinking here really in terms of trying to split the file system style uh, document and then keep exactly as uh, Dave already uh, played out, we have only one level of inodes and it's now a different level of looking at what is inside these uh, things collected by uh, an index table or inode. And so we would have also two different documents for that. One that only looks at the i uh, the i node level, uh, without knowing anything about directories, uh, but the forwarder could make benefit of that. And everything on top of that, what is then typically used uh, called a logical file system, would be handled differently in a different document. Well, what, what do you mean by so, Christian? Let me ask question? you a question. Can I, can I ask Christian a question here? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, one of the things that um, uh, I found useful in applications is to be able to give an application hints about various things like traversal order and importance. Um, would you consider those things to not be part of the base spec? And if they're not part of the base spec, um, we would at least in the base spec have to have more than just hash pointers. We need to have an extension mechanism so you could add these things to hash pointers in a different document. And then my question would be, is the specification of the extension mechanism actually 90% of the way there to get you the other two, the other things? I mean, we could really then take Unix then as the, uh, exactly that playground, what should be in the inode uh, is- uh, Well, remember, inodes, have, ch inodes or... have changed with more sophisticated file systems. Yeah, uh, but exactly should it be at the, inside the directory document or is it really in the inode itself? Uh, and I think there, uh, as you say, things have changed. What I see from other object, uh, show objects and I point out now to that or the hypercore, they really try to stick to one sort of hash-based thing. And then how you use these uh, hash-based things is you have a second one if you want to implement a directory thing. It doesn't have to be mesh, meshed up, uh, mixed up in one layer. So keeping things separate. So what I mean, you say a base document. There could be also two base documents. One exactly only the inode level, the the hash based pure binary thing, and then the second more uh, file system annotation hints, whatever you want. In a second one, they uh, of course both would be existing. But uh, they would have a clear focus, and uh, you would wouldn't have one some of the questions we had today. No, I, I absolutely agree that that's one possibility. I'm still trying to think about how how you would build in the extensibility mechanisms in order to build the second thing without completely duplicating everything. In other words, a a, a directory like manifest would in fact not be able to use the data structures in the simple manifest, but would have to, you'd have to re redo it all from scratch. And then you'd have two completely different um, 
sets of code for traversing the two different types of manifest structures. I, I would just raise the question. Maybe that's maybe that's a better way to go. I don't know. Yeah, you call it manifest in both cases, but if we say one is called the index table when you look at the low level hash thing and the other is then the really manifest the directory style manifest. Uh, we don't have to call both manifest. Again, so, so, if, if the thing that's in the index table does not require any annotations on the individual index entries, I can see how to get there. Yes. But if the individual index entries in order to do the more sophisticated functions need annotations. Either they have to be there on day one, or you have to have defined an extension mechanism in the base spec to be able to add them later. Right, and I was asking, uh, do we have such kind of annotations that are essential for the forwarder to doing a good job? Uh, otherwise, we shouldn't put them there. Well, well forwarders, well, well, forwarders don't need to look at manifests at all. Yeah, yeah, forwarders would, I mean, the simplest thing is the manifest is opaque to them. I thought about the signing. That was one of the arguments. You sign one, let's call it index table, and you don't have to sign all the leaf data nodes, data objects, data blobs. Well, that, right. that, that, that's, for the, that's for the application. But forwarders yeah. don't check signatures yeah. anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I, I was saying one thing. I, I would be interested in more people uh, also uh, joining in here in the discussion. I mean, uh, so, I mean, this is now starting to, to become work uh, and trying to solve the work while we are discussing. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we had some use cases of manifests that you can do deduplification, that you can extend. Uh, and the, the question is, if we try think about splitting the, the document, can we really then assign these use cases or uh, how we wanted to use Flix really in wh which of the documents they belong? So that is something uh, that would have to be done if we go for a document splitting. Um, it was, for example, relocating or, uh, or moving uh, a complete, uh, let's call it flick now, a pure flick uh, to some other uh, uh, repo or provider. Is, is all that possible still if we do the split or at the end we will have to merge it? This is something I can't really tell and, and functionality wise we might have to quickly look at. But I understand Dave has basic uh, objections of inefficiency if we have to redo the same thing twice. Right. So, 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 um, so my, my intuition here is that we could probably break off some of the stuff around what's now called namespaces and we might change to something else and a few of those things. But uh, if you think about the point, the, the, annex, the index table entries or pointer annotations, I don't see how you add them later. So I'll give you an example. Um, one of, the one that we define is size, right? That's a really useful thing to have on day one so that you don't have to fetch something before you know how big it is. Um, and so that is also those a sorts source of, of things, concern, the size, because you uh, might be cheated. You might have a, a malicious uh, information sitting there and, and you, that is really application. Well, I mean, if, you're pro if your producer is generating the manifest is malicious, I say you have deeper problems than in lying about the size of things. Yes, yeah, but you could uh, link in a directory to an object you thought was uh, kosher, and then suddenly you might have problems. So the producer itself usually doesn't. This wasn't the generator of the content. Well, you shouldn't be traversing things in a manifest signed by a producer you don't trust, right? It could be. I mean, we we call it malicious. It could be also by accident, uh, some programming error. Uh, it's uh, you, your application. Consuming manifest has to safeguard against because it is really data driven application. It 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 will do the traversal right. as as uh, as uh, as uh, mandated by the manifest more or less. 
So yeah, but I can play the, I can play those games without even adding size. I can just put bogus pointers in the manifest, so the application estimates how much data it's going to get, and it's wildly wrong because there are all these extra useless pointers in the manifest. I, I mean, is is it better to not have any indication of the size and just you know have to always go for the worst case or you know, in like the 99% of the cases where people are doing it the right way, you know, have these hints that actually help. Is there a possibility to have the metadata really as a shadow? It would be really only, let's call it at a directory level, to have a kind of a second manifest with all the size information that is then compact. You know, so you comp you instead of having one tree where every node is annotated, you have two trees, one with the raw bits and the other with the raw size information. And that this raw size information can be much more compact. It is a kind of a companion. Uh, you can consult well, it a, or not. That's, a, that's an interesting idea. Of course, then you may need two round trips to get anything. And, you're, and the, most of the data is actually in the hashes themselves. And that would no, all be can, repeated. Uh, no two round trips. You can send off the request in parallel for the size information and for the first top level manifest, uh, the, the bits. Yeah, so, so, so doing, doing a parallel tree metadata, you know, whether it's size information or Yes. You know, the, like the, like the other annotations that you would typically typically put in there are things like, does this hash point to another manifest or does this point to data, um, or or things like you know time codes or you know you know other things that might help you pick the right thing to choose from. Um, yep. Sure. That 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 that's another way of doing it, and and. Um, uh, you know, it, it really there, go down. We, we, could, we, we could talk about, you know, the pros and cons of doing it that way, but that is another way of doing it. Yep. It's exactly moving that uh, hint and uh, uh, the, the content of, of the uh, collected bits uh, into the application space, and you don't have necessarily a, a penalty because you can ask for those two things in parallel. Yeah. Architecturally wise, I would feel more confident uh, keeping things cleaner and we would yeah. have only one well, level. You know, so, 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 so one of the reasons that we did it as a combine was it, 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 it could be less error prone. When, when you have parallel structures, you you need to make sure that the second structure is correctly aligned to the first structure. Um, however, you're going to do that alignment, you know, whether it's just by ordinal position or whether you have some sort of other key or reference from one to the other. Um, you know, it's just more of a chance that those things might get out of whack, um, whereas right. having them all also... tightly bundled, it, yep. it, it would be less likely that things would become out of whack. But uh, at the same time, uh, you could also turn that argument positively. If you have an error in the size computation, you can republish the size tree independently and correct that easy without having to republish all the terabytes that you had in a flick. Well, you still wouldn't have to republish any of the data. Right? You just be republishing the manifest. But if it's a tree with a lot of um, uh, depth, uh, you would have all the manifests up to the root have to be, they, you change the hashes of everything. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, well, that's I guess, I guess, if you got it wrong, if you made a mistake, sure. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, then you also have like the version thing. You know, if if yes. if you have your manifest published under one name, and then you have your annotation published under another name, and then you update it, 
you know, then the consumer has to be sure that they're getting whatever the current, you know, annotation is for that manifest. But that, um, but that is your thinking that things are mashed together. Uh, in in my now, let's call it the split world, you only would get hold of the directory level manifest, which points to the two now the uh, pure binary and the pure size manifests and there is no version confusion you get a new directory uh, object which has a changed tree uh, manifest uh, entry so uh, yeah. I, yeah. okay yeah, but, sure, uh, sure yep yeah, yeah yeah doing doing it at the root level and updating the root level yep that works great yep it's but the dangerous thing is here we are inventing while we discuss uh, the solutions i'm not sure we should do that. I was starting with the scope discussion and uh, trying to see, are we really uh, confident that we are on the right path to, to, or should we have a round of uh, checking uh, the potential split or whatever other kind of trying to reduce uh, to something that, that uh, is not controversial, let's call it that way. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so, 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 so one topic is the annotated pointers versus the just you know uh, array of pointers uh, and the other is the naming convention uh, and uh, or tags uh, in there um, the uh, sorry you know, sorry mark are you list now listing issues that we should discuss next or what we just talked about I'm, I'm confused uh, well, I'm 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 trying to enumerate, you know, you know, kind of what what are the topics that are in the O2 draft that uh, might fall into this bucket of did it get too complex and we want to simplify it? Okay. Um, so. So. I would, sorry, if I could just, I, to, the way I think about that is there's the question of how do I get the, the contents of this file-like object? And then there's the sort of hint of arbitrary metadata that could be stuck in the manifest, which is what I came away from the O2 draft with, which is what kind of scared me, right? Mm -hmm. So I would, that's the part that I would argue strongly ought to be separated out from this thing. And I'd like, I'd like that last suggestion of having a pointer in the top level thing, and maybe you even have a top level manifest and then two different, uh, I don't know, a directory or something. But, um, okay, I'll shut up now and let you continue, sorry. So I have a question about what we're, what's the, what we're thinking about. So let's say you have the simple index table slash hash group that doesn't have any annotations on the individual array um, entries. What's the proposal for the separate thing that would contain, for example, a size annotation? Because they're, they're, they're going to be potentially, if there's n entries in a hash group, they're going to be n size entries in this other data structure. So you line them up somehow by array index or something in a separate data structure. I'm, I'm sort of lost. Well, yeah, yeah. So, so there'd be a bunch of different ways of doing it. You know, that that might be getting too in the weeds. Um, but uh, you know, that's that's why I'm saying you know there there, there there's there's issues about how they might get out of sync that that you have to be careful about. Uh, what I'm, you know, maybe a related question to that is, if we just have the simple hash pointer manifest with no annotation, in this top level manifest that says, this is the data and this is the annotation, how does it say that? You know, you, right. you, you, can't, just, you can't just have two hash pointers and one's data and one's annotations because you don't know who's who. Um, you know, maybe if you start retrieving it, you could figure out, oh, this tree is annotation. 
Um, yeah, well, we don't have to we don't have to design it here. Uh, exactly. uh, yeah, that's for sure. Uh, the, the meta level would be: uh, should we start a kind of investigation? Uh, can we? Uh, do the split, or do we lose so much that we should stick to the current uh, O2 version uh, and maybe just then discuss point by point uh, what should be sticking there? So that is my yeah. proposal. So one, uh, one to, thing, to one, the split. So one thing I think we could split out is what's been called namespaces, right? In other words, the basic document assumes you know how to construct an interest name and fetch things when all you have are the hash pointers. And the second document says, um, maybe only allow it in a top level manifest, which limits your flexibility somewhat, but not a lot, um, that says, you know, this top level manifest has this extra data structure that contains the name constructors. So I, I can see how to pull that apart relatively easily because that's not the same order of uh, data duplication as you'd see in something that might want to be a, attached to every single um, array entry in a hash group. You know, to some extent, I also think about you know how many memory references it's going to take to dereference one of these things, and it's, it's definitely going to be double if you have two independent parallel data structures. Yeah, you know, what one path, you know, we, we tried to avoid was saying they're, you know, you know, ignoring the annotations for now, but just talking about what I called namespaces is not having a different, um, you know, a, a, a schema for a root manifest versus a, you know, interior node versus a leaf manifest. You know, the way it's written right now, there's just one syntax for all manifests, where, you know, regardless of its position. We make some recommendations that say, well, you should probably do this only in the root, but, but there's nothing that says you can't do it, you know, wherever you choose to, if you have a good reason to. Um, and that may be flexibility we don't need. Well, you know, then then you need to say, well, you know, if the root manifest has a special syntax, what happens if I want to make a manifest that points to root manifest? Because they're no longer root manifests anymore. Um, isn't, isn't that at that point a different type of thing, like a directory? Yeah, maybe, maybe it is, you know, maybe okay. you have to say you can never make a, a you know, a, a root manifest pointing to another root manifest. Uh, you know, you, you can't enforce that, but you could say, don't do this. The directory tree, if you can't do that. Um trying to go again to meta level uh, should we continue that content discussion to decide whether to split or not is that then depending on whether how, what we find today in that discussion or should we just say yes we need a, a study round to see whether uh, splitting makes sense or not so um christian um what are exactly um, the reasons um, to split the documents into like one or two with different features? Is it because you think the features are controversial and we're not quite sure yet, uh, which one we really need? Or is it just the complexity argument that we uh, may take too long to, to get them you know, written up correctly? I mean, the complexity argument that was just kind of a feeling that came by reparsing the uh, documents, but also kind of an architectural thing that uh, you might want to keep the keeping together the bits 
as one task compared to how you annotate, which can evolve. So evolvability argument. If we separate that out, we can have different ways of uh, doing directories, doing hints, having, for example, you can offer alternate uh, ways to fetch stuff. I'm not sure if the choice uh, currently can be easily found in the manifest. Uh, or you have, by the way, three different ways to access the bits. I mean, there are many different ways to then to handle bits, but we need a first basic way to keep the bits together. And uh, that is, so it's an architectural uh, concern I have. Okay. So yeah, I, I mean, you know, you know, clearly you could put a pointer, you know, at the top level of a manifest that says, you know, here's where you could find, you know, some sort of annotation for this manifest, um, and and not, you know, and you know, you could leave the specifications about what those look like to separate documents. Um, the uh, you know, I, I, I guess, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't really like the idea of having the format of a manifest depend upon the location of the manifest in the tree. Um, and I, I also like having the flexibility for a producer to be able to repeat information wherever they want in the manifest tree. So. You know, maybe one person wants to just put like the annotation pointer and the namespace construction directive in 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 some top level thing, and, and people always have to fetch that and walk down from it. You know, another producer might say, "Well, you know, I know that there's these breakpoints every so often where someone might be joining in, uh, you know, in the middle of the manifest tree and." I want to be able to repeat this information every so often to either update what I'm doing um, or to, you know, give them the hint. It's like, you know, hey, just as a reminder, this is what we're doing, you know, for the creation, things like that. You are back to doing the study that I'm suggesting we should do in the coming weeks right now. Well, uh, the one of the slides said we need volunteers. So uh, if I said uh, I volunteer to take part of a brainstorm afternoon uh, and exactly do that uh, split discussion. Is it worth or not? Uh, so who would join? Who would uh, join me in, in doing such an exercise? Or am, am I running here to traversal and you would like rather prefer to go on with the current path and just uh, get it re ready for November and we, we don't consider splitting at all? Well, we want to get things. We want to get things right. We don't want to. I mean, this is a research group, right? So we're not driving towards some kind of standardization that has, you know, five five G deployment deadlines and stuff like that. So, you know, if there's important questions outstanding, that's the purpose of a research group, which is to explore them. Um, I would certainly participate because I'm a, I'm definitely an advocate of having annotated pointers. I think at the end of the day, it's way simpler. Than trying to correlate multiple data structures. I feel less strongly about whether um, things like what we're calling namespaces uh, have to be in the base document. Well, the, 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 there needs to be some way for the producer to say, this is how I have named things. To, to be able to construct the interest. Uh, and, That's and, true. And I, That's true. But that could be, again, you know, that could be in the manifest. It could also be secret information in the application. Just like, remember, when people construct namespaces, there's all kinds of side assumptions about various semantics and structures that are not explicitly encoded in the name. 
Well, yeah. I'm not. I, I mean, I'm not. You know, I'm. I'm not arguing against this 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 name construction thing. I think it's very useful, but I don't think the lack of it prevents an application from, you know, having something in the code that already knows how to interpret a man, a manifest that doesn't have that information. Well, I, yeah, I, I guess that that that's the you know every app has its own data and no app share it, you know, between themselves view, right? Okay, you know, so if, 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 if every producer can use their own namespace construction and I have to know how every producer is secretly doing this, you know, that's, I, I just don't see how that allows sharing. So I, I, that's, it doesn't. It doesn't. That's, that's, that's okay. a great point, but I think it would be very helpful to sort of uh stake out the classes of applications that this thing is is designed to support and when i i'm as i'm listening to this i'm thinking about the implications for somebody that's going to build a library and maybe a transport protocol that's going to make use of this fundamental building block protocol to support applications right and you know the other observation is that um History, I think, suggests that getting a simple thing out there and, and letting people build on it and learn with it uh, is the, as opposed to trying to, and, and I, I totally hear what you're saying, Mark, and I think some of the applications make a lot of sense, like having the ability to put metadata in, you know, deep down in the structure and those kind of things. I think that's where we got to um, discuss that, but um, they're trying to be well, there's, two, things... there's two levels of this. One is what extensibility you build in. Right. And the second is what explicit features do you put in? So, for example, in terms of the annotations, we didn't put all these annotations in. We put one in just so we'd have a proof of concept, which is the, the object side. Right. But there's an but but the question is, what do you do if you have if you if you promulgate a um, a very basic, um, the only thing that's there is the pointer, and then you decide, gee, it'd be really nice to have this annotation, right? <clears throat> then the only architectural choice you have is a parallel data structure because you don't have the extensibility built into the, um, the simple thing so that you can extend it. Right. So, I mean, I get your argument about simplicity, but I think there's an argument that um, simplicity lacking extensibility is is potentially um, a dead end. I'm hearing dead silence. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I guess you know, as, as far as like the 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 rules for generating the name that go in an interest, um, I guess I'm much more in the camp of saying that the manifest needs to be explicit about how you generate the name. Um, and and. You know, because what, once it's out there, I don't necessarily know what, what application generated it. Um, you know, if you want these things to only be useful within one, you know, individual application domain, then sure, keep it, you know, opaque. But I, I, I really think that a, a consumer should be able to fetch a manifest and be able to figure out how to generate the names corresponding to that manifest from the manifest itself. What do you think, Christian? Trying to uh, organize my uh, conceptual space, what we're trying to do. Uh, if I try to compare the hash based world, let's call it this is the world's hard drive. And uh, how many different file systems can you put on top of that? Because that is what uh, is the interest name generation. There might be different ways to do that. Uh, so um, I, I see your argument about sensibility. Where should it be? 
uh, I'm still not convinced we have to put it in the hard drive in the, the, the lower bits on each block uh, and uh, that it would like in the Unix case you could separate that out uh, at the high level and have many different file systems and using the parallel uh, tree con uh, approach uh, to run their file system they would have their own documents and application libraries would say okay i uh, this is the on the market this is the file system that was the most uh, popular i will also implement that uh, so so, uh, so christian let's get away from the file system argument because every modern file system had to redo inodes from scratch because the base inode didn't have what they needed inodes for ZFS are different from inodes from APFS that are different from inodes from HFS plus, and none of them was able to leverage the fact that the, back at the EXT2 days, there was a simple inode. They didn't layer it on top. They redid the inodes on the on-disk structure. Now, I, I, I think you may be right about manifest, but I think the file system argument completely falls apart. Okay, so I would probably then start thinking about having an intermediate uh, uh, annotation layer, uh, three different parallel structures, but uh, I, I see the, the, the critique that will immediately come for that. But I try to put it again on the meta level. Uh, I, would, I think it's worth doing that uh, uh, study uh, we have now spent now, what is it, um, an hour 20. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure we conclude today. Uh, so, um, yeah, I still uh, stand to that. I, I personally, I would like to take that one step back and uh, to have confidence that we are on the right path to go, uh, because it's really an architectural choice uh, to put the possibility to have all things annotated at every manifest level and having exactly one manifest type for mingling together, bit keeping together, and that directory uh, tasks. Mm. So, <clears throat> I, I can somehow understand so the, the architectural argument, uh, Christian. Um, on the other hand, um, it's also a question, say, what level of um, perfection do we try to achieve here? I mean, it's, it's not that um, I mean, we have to find a, um, say, solid specification that will be used by all applications in, in the world uh, next week. And it's more like we don't really know yet how applications um, will end up um, using um, Flick um, manifest in the end. So what we, I think, are interested in, in is um, enabling more experiments, enabling um, more people to, to build applications and, you know, play with, with uh, Flick manifests. And that could be an argument um, to produce, say, one specification now that allows you to um, do all these th things in, like, different ways so that we have this flexibility um, built in. So that could be an argument against splitting um, I'm not uh, saying that uh, we should only have one. The splitting would just be, it would be two parallel uh, drafts to be worked on. Just separate the stuff and uh, have a mechanism exactly, for example, the parallel tree construction. Uh, yeah. It would be the same functionality, just two different documents. Okay. I'm missing you. The, are you saying, and we, we do two, ver we, we do two manifests specifications, one in the style you're talking about and one in the style that's the current document, and then let application people decide which one they want to try and experiment with. I would be in favor of that. Christ, we have two completely different um, no, no, wire format no, no. protocols. No, no, it would be the complement. So I still assume the split would be about the layering. You would have the bit level, uh, basic uh, flick, and uh, uh, as a second uh, companion. But what draft. if we decide that the layered approach is wrong later? Well, then I bring and we've frozen arguments. the simple one, and doesn't have extensibility mechanisms. Yes, yeah, so it's a question of time. Uh, if we think, if we find out that the integrated approach is wrong, then we will have to anyway split it. Uh, so I can also flip the argument here. 
Yeah. I mean, remember, I mean, look, we're not going to get everything right, right? I mean, yeah. I, I hate to, I'll bring it up. I know I'll get flamed by about 17 people on, on this call right now. Remember selectors, right? We didn't discover for five years, that select, for more than five years, the selectors are probably a bad idea. Right, so perhaps we'll put some features in now on the um, presumption that they're useful and find out later that they're not. That's certainly, that's certainly a danger, right? But that's what research is about. Um, if, if I were confident that making the architectural decision to layer manifest in the way you're talking about would work out, I'd be a lot more comfortable. It just, it just feels, it feels like we're tying our hands yeah. too early. Yeah. So, so, you know, what, so one thing we should do is, is have a more technical discussion about what a parallel annotation approach would look like, uh, and, and, and maybe come up with some examples about you know, um, what, what the different uh, objects would contain. Um, and, you know, then maybe we'll discover that it's not quite so simple, especially if you're trying to, you know, fit everything into fixed size MTUs or, or something like that. Um, so, but, but, but it, you know, th that's a reasonable, you know, thing to think about and, and you know, see what it looks like. Um, you know, for, for the namespace or, 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 you know, name creation mechanism, you know, it, it, it doesn't need to be as, uh, flexible as it is in the current draft. We could just make it, you know, like one thing that exists, you know, somewhere in the manifest and it's not repeated. It can't be different between hash groups. It's, you know, just a, you know, one specification, you know, that's fine as long as it's something, um, you know, so we, we could simplify, you know, the, how, how that is done. Um, we could break out the, you know, we, we could just have the very simple pre-shared key encryption in the document and break out the others to other documents. Um, but you know, as long as they're done in parallel, so we know that they all have, you know, are likely to work. Um, you know, that that's fine with me too. So, yeah, I mean, one of the th one of the things that uh, has to go into the conversation, of course, is that that we we've worked very hard to get the signing and the encryption. So that it's simple and works. Um, so if splitting things up in two layers complicates encryption um, or doesn't complicate encryption, that that that's that that makes it um, less of a burden. But if it turns out that it it makes encryption harder, um, that's a counter argument, right? So it's yeah. something it's that's something to look at, right? Whether yeah. you know. If the if the basic thing can be signed with a different key from the annotation, um, uh, what does that mean? Is that is that a feature or is it a bug? Yeah, yeah. Um, the um, yeah, you know, what I was thinking about, you know, splitting the encryption out. I, I think really that is just taking. Uh, I, I don't think there'd be any changes to to the um, uh, grammar, but it would just be taking the sections on like the RSA stuff and putting in a separate document, just to make this document simpler. I don't think it would actually technically change anything about right. how it's written up. Um, and and as far as the parallel tree um, annotations. You know, as far as I'm concerned, the 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 the, the syntax or grammar of those annotation objects is like completely wide open. You know, it, it doesn't need to be anything at all that looks like the flip grammar, though. You know, keeping it closer 
would make implementation a lot easier. But um, uh, so, yeah, but, but you know, the, 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 that, that kind of gets, you know, depending on how much you pry it open to being different, you know, th th there might just be, you, know, you might just have to reinvent stuff again. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Thank I mean, if, if we wind up with something that's just a parallel array index, that's a whole lot simpler than a bunch of cross pointers. Yeah. Yeah. Par parallel array won't work if you pack the data tree to the maximum MTU size you want to operate at. You know, you, you would have to keep you have to keep both data structures, you know, size. So the largest one, you know, fits oh. in your target. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I will not engage right now in that discussion that I suggested would be an afternoon, but maybe ask the following. Do we have a notion of a kind of another standards kind of profile? Uh, uh, a kind of a, let's call it a compliance application would at, need, at least need to implement that, but optionally this or what is your feeling about the zero two standard? All the things written down there must be more or less implemented to be part of the game. Yeah, I mean, I'm oh, trying to it, find a way how in the future we yeah. could maybe even shrink it back to exactly the bit level uh, flick. Right. So, so, so what? Uh, lo, 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 let me bring up one other option for the annotation, which um, which I think we talked about like ages ago. But um, one is to do parallel data structures, but in the same manifest. So I can have a hash group that's just the list of data uh, of data pointers, and it's a simple thing. Then I could have another group. It's not a hash group anymore. It's like an annotation group that has my annotations that I have to keep aligned with my pointers, but it's all in the same data structure, right? It's not a, it's not a separate object that I'm doing this with. It's all one object. And so I just have basically two arrays or three arrays or four arrays that I make all the same size. Um, so it, 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 you know, that's another approach to it. So in that example, a minimum compliant application only needs to understand the hash groups that has pointers in it. It doesn't need to understand hash, you know, you know, other groups. They're not a hash group anymore. They're an annotation group. It doesn't need to understand any annotation groups. It can just ignore those. Um, yeah, that's so, an alternate encoding. I, I, I'm really curious if Christian thinks that solves his problem. I'd be very surprised if it did. Yeah. Because all the annotations are TLVs, and if you don't understand the type of the TLV, you ignore it. Uh, who said that, that all annotations must be TLV? I was thinking about, for example, the size would be a packed uh, integer. No, I believe it's a TLV, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, everything's a TLV. Well, between those two um, approaches, I don't have I don't have a preference. I'm happy to look at what the implications in terms of code complexity and performance would be because they're semantically mm -hmm. equivalent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Christian, what do you, do you see? Do you see a difference between those two from coming from the point of view you're coming from? Me or do we lose Christian or is somebody just thinking? I've not heard anything for 30 seconds. So. Yeah. So Christian is unmuted. So okay. Christian, can you still hear? I mean, if if the uh, if the other way of encoding it and possibly specifying the 
other type of hash group, in other words, if we have typed hash groups in a separate document, I would have no problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we, we would probably, you know, start just calling them like a group and a hash group would be specifically a group that has hashes in it. Then you would have, you know, different annotation groups that would have whatever it is they have in them. Um, and those could all be specified in different documents. Yeah, that's fine with me. I think that that may actually be good, right? So, uh, that's different from defining a new T for a TLV, right? Oh, yeah, I think it's it would be in a separate document. New yeah. <laughs> so. um. Yeah, I mean, it, from it a really code efficiency it. standpoint, it seems to be a wash if you run two arrays off the same index in parallel and pull things out, or if you traverse um, an individual array bucket um, with, you know, with a lower level data structure, right? It, those two things seem fairly equivalent. It, it'll be pretty close. Um, you know, the it, it'll be, you know, well, yeah, so who knows what your memory architecture is like, but yeah, you know, you, you would be able to find each group easily because each group has its own length. So you just skip ahead to the next group and the next group and you find all the groups. Um, and uh, uh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, think, I think either of those is workable, but it doesn't, I'm curious as to whether, you know, that that does anything to um, to get closer anyway to what Christian wants to see, which is the ability to construct a manifest that is incredibly simple and doesn't have any extra goo. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> I mean, maybe as a, a we spent like ninety minutes um, on this now um, as a constructive proposal. Um, how about um, planning for having this technical um, discussion on on the say doc document or specification structure, so that we kind of could plan for another meeting where we maybe invite um, say a few proposals um, so for how we organize the, um, the specification uh, in the future. So I'm I'm hoping that Christian would uh, be able to prepare some ideas. Maybe other people have some have some, some other suggestions and then we can kind of try to resolve that question um, in a technical discussion. Yeah, by the way, um, it would be really helpful in that discussion to have some input given a, but now that I look at who's on the call, yeah. if some people who have built NDN applications would weigh in on what what they would like to see, if anything. I mean, some people build NDN applications without using manifests at all. I'd love to get input from, from that point of view as well, right? Yeah, so I was thinking we seem to have exhausted the kind of discussion of say different um, say preferences and um, potential pros and cons. I think next what we need is um, yeah some some more yeah thinking time and more, more, more like preparing so writing things up in a more structured way so that we can really have this say next level of technical discussion. Otherwise, I, I don't think we're making much progress if we continue today. Yeah. So here's a suggestion. Um, let's go off and. You know, exchange ideas over email for a while. Next week is SIGCOM, so I would not suggest we try to push things that early. But that we schedule, we, we need some kind of deadline uh, to motivate people, and some, maybe we'll do something in a couple of weeks. Yeah, for me, for me, the twenty fourth or later is 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 best. I don't, I don't have much available. That's fine. Yeah, uh, soon. 
So before Labor Day, though, in the U.S., how's that? When is it? When? When is Labor Day? September. Um. Monday in September, Dirk. September seventh. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um. So what what I'll do right now while it's fresh in my mind is I'll write an email to the list, kind of des describing some of the you know describing the different ways of doing annotation that we talked about, and a separate email talking about um, you know the, the the namespace, you know the name of namespaces and and different ways of of handling that problem. Yeah, my suggestion is we call them name constructors. Yeah, because that's what they find the they are. It's a bunch of stuff that tells you how to construct your name. Yeah. Or name templates or something. Yeah. Yeah. I like constructors because it's Cody. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but uh, Mark, you said so. Um, after the 24th, you would be available, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, some days are better than other days, but but it has to be like the 24th or later. Okay, uh, yeah. So any input, there's a whole bunch of people who have been monitoring the call who haven't said anything. Here's your opportunity. So what we could still do in addition to um, um, you know, ass assigning these um, work items to Mark and um, I guess Christian, <laughs> is there anything else we uh, can do independent of this discussion? So Dave already signed up for an editorial pass for general cleanup. Is there anything else that can be done uh, independent of, of the other discussion? It'd be nice if signed up, somebody signed up for IANA considerations and security considerations. So, so, so those are probably relatively independent of some of the things we're working on. Yeah, the IANA consideration probably also depend a bit on the extensibility mechanisms we end up with, but yeah. The other thing, so so independent of um, you know draft related things that could be useful is of course um, more implementation experience. So there's the Python code by Mark. Um, I guess Christian has his um, own code base. Which is of course completely outdated right now. <laughs> and I'm quite frustrated with the C. I would also go for Python right now. That is the best way to prototype. Yeah. But uh, maybe that is just a hint that if I would come up with a, that uh, strict layering uh, suggestion and the parallel tree thing, I would have to come with Python code to make my point. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, you you mentioned that uh, you you put Mark and me in in one bin to to that uh, discussion. Maybe others want to join. Uh, have we a clear kind of agenda of goal? What would be the outcome of that discussion? I think the outcome should be um, ideally some kind of consensus how we want to um, structure the Flick specifications or the 
application in the future. So it means okay, so, so a very uh, document centric um, agenda. I yeah, I, well, I see the point. Yeah. Well, I mean it, that all the 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 way you structure the doc document also depends on say the architectural technical approach you you apply. So I think it's both. You know, I, I think that there's, you know, several distinct conversations that could be had. One uh, is how we want to handle annotation, you know, technically. <laughs> and another is how we're going to handle the name constructors. And then another is how, you know, given the choices that we make, how are we going to organize the document or document to describe all that? Mm. Um, you know, if we go for like the parallel annotations, then, you know, that, that, that clearly begs for separate documents. If we go for the, um, parallel, but all in one manifest, you know, separate types of groups. You know, you could at least describe one sort of group in this document as a proof of concept and then do separate documents for fancier things. You could do that or just make sure the extensibility mechanism is care carefully yeah. laid out. Yeah. Yeah. And have written at least one of the extension documents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, so I, I think the more important things to like do first are to have the technical discussions about how do we want to solve annotations and how do we want to solve namespace constructors. But I think that the point that Dirk is making is quite important. Uh, uh, although we do the technical discussion, it has to come up with a recommendation, even if it's a first feeling, probably it's better to go with one document. That's the, the correct path to continue and not forget that uh, outcome of the meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, mean, I was just asking about uh, when we are mm -hmm. clear about what the goal is of that meeting. And it uh, would be great if, if we could um, prepare this a little bit on, uh, on the mail list by exchanging a, a few ideas first. That would be really useful. Okay, maybe I, I then will try uh, to write up a manifesto uh, trying to express why I come to that conclusion. A manifesto mm -hmm. about manifests. Uh, maybe do that. Okay, I take the point. <laughs> okay, great. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, I think um, the discussion actually really, really had to um, understand this concern and um, so the yeah, different options that we um, have in front of us. Um, so thanks, thanks a lot, everybody. Um, so looking at the clock, it's here 1946. Um, is there anything else on on Flick or the, the manifest topic at large that we sh should uh, discuss or at least uh, bring up to not forget about? Okay, I think that was um, already productive enough. Um, thanks a lot. Um, any other IC energy related um, things that people want to discuss or mention?
So from, from our perspective, so Dave's and mine, um, we would suggest to, you know, continue the discussion on time TLV and so on uh, on the list. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think with that we are done. Thanks everybody for hanging in here. It's an important thank topic. You. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, thank you for pushing that and uh, yeah, for organizing the, the discussion. Okay. okay. Ciao. Hope to see you soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.